Good evening, y'all. Uh, I went out by the garden, headed out to the mailbox while ago to put some stuff out to mail, and all I could see was yellow squash. Thank God for the yellow squash. So we had already had a big picking yesterday, or the day before. So I am cutting it up on my Nemco chopper to put on the freeze dryer. And some of y'all have commented that you wanted to see more with the freeze dryer. It's a process, but I'm going to show you what I do. I love the Nimco chopper. I ordered it from Tundra.com. And uh, they have, it comes with different size uh, blades in it. And you, when you order it, you get one, and then you have to order the others separately. But I've got a quarter inch and a half inch slicer, a quarter inch and a half inch dicer. So it makes everything the perfect, everything's the perfect same size. So I've already sliced quite a bit of my squash, but I'm going to bring y'all over here to the chopper to see how easy it is to slice things uniformly, and then we'll get the trays loaded and get them in the freeze dryer. And again, it could take 40-something hours for it to completely freeze dry, but it's so worth it because I can put a ton of freeze-dried squash into a couple of jars. So, it has a much better texture than when you uh, dehydrate it. Dehydrating it, it's brittle, very brittle. With this, it snaps like a little piece of styrofoam. It's just the coolest, coolest end results. So, I'm going to bring y'all over here to watch the easy chopper being used, and then we'll get our trays loaded, and we'll get it on the Okay, coaster. I tried to get it to where I, I could do my work, and I can see y'all too. This is the Nimco Easy Chopper, and I've got on it the quarter inch slicing blade. And I don't know, let me put this behind it and see if that helps you to be able to see the separate, but it's a perfect quarter inch. And I just looked out and found these little bowls that'll fit right under it. And then I, I oil this a little bit, usually with olive oil, so I can uh, slide it up and down easily. And I cut my squash in just pieces that'll fit on the grid. And then that's all there is to it. And it's all a quarter of an inch. It all is the right. Now I'm going to do one zucchini in with all of it. And when I, when I used to use my, um, before I got my freeze dryer and I put everything on my Excalibur, I would sprinkle seasoning on this squash like Tony's, which is, um, uh, for you that are not from around here, it's a Cajun seasoning. Or you could just put garlic and onion powder, a little bit of onion salt, garlic salt, whatever. It makes wonderful chips, and they're not fattening. So that's an idea. Now this I'm going to do plain because I'm just going to put it up to be able to cook with it and season it however I want to. But see, it's all perfectly quarter inch slices. So it'll all be uniform when I start cooking it. Also, even with no seasoning on it, it's good to use, uh, like if you wanted to dip salsa, which has no calories in it, if you're counting calories. I do that every one, every Monday I count till about noon and then I quit. Um, that's a good dip for your salsa or hummus or whatever because there's no calories in it and there's nutrition in it. That's something to think about. If you don't have uh, a freeze dryer, do it on your uh, dehydrator or do it in the oven. I think it's at two, I don't know. A low setting on the oven but look it up it's a wonderful snack okay now we're gonna get our trays loaded let me move this over and I've got my harvest right and again I've got my um, silicone liner on it but I, I don't have to use that with this because it won't stick but if I'm doing something that's real sticky what that, I do wonderful. is I try to get them on here single layer and then if they're not too tall, which I think I can put parchment and do a second layer if I need to, but sometimes that's what I do. I put parchment paper between the two layers, and I can get more on here. But there is a weight limit on your trays. And I probably have way too much squash done, which means I guess we'll have some squash to eat here after a while because I've already got it all sliced up. But maybe double stacking it might all fit. And if y'all are in the ball, if you know, if you're trying to decide if you want a freeze dryer or not, there's a group online, Betty's Harvest Right Freeze Dryer Group, and that you get all the information you could possibly want on that um, site. So that's something that for you to remember that you can look up. 
I researched there quite a bit before I ordered mine. Okay, I'm just going to keep loading and I might speed y'all up here where you can watch the process at fast speed and I'll get my five trays loaded and then we'll get it on the freeze dryer. Now some people put theirs in the deep freeze and freeze it before you put it on the freeze dryer and that can cut down on your on your time a little bit but my freezers are always so stinking full till I don't have room to put five trays in there and I know me if I were to buy another one and, and say I'm just going to use this for my freeze dryer no it would be full of whatever was on sale that I thought I better buy today because it's going to be high tomorrow that's how I roll. Okay, I was going to so, show y'all I've got one double stacked you can see the uh, parchment is thin. You can see through it. But there's my parchment. And I'm double stacking them. This one's ready to go. And I've got uh, four more that I'm going to double stack as far as my squash holds out. And here's what the parchment is. And I've got this little piece cut. So I've got to cut some to go the rest of the way. But I'll bring y'all back and give you a quick look at all of them. And then we'll get it on the freeze dryer. The only thing I don't like about canning season is everything's a mess in the kitchen. But it'll just have to be. I've got one tray over there, and here's one. Troy's already taken one out, and here's the other two. And every one of these are double stacked, like I showed you. We've got parchment, so we're fixing to get them out there on the freeze dryer. Okay, we're getting them loaded on the racks. That's the third one. We'll get the rest of them done, and then we'll get it turned on. Okay, the trays are in, the door insulator's in. He's going to shut the door and lock it and get it turned on. Okay, y'all, it's really loud, so he's fixing to get over here, take care of this little screen right here. It's a touch screen, and he'll get it all going, and the next picture y'all will have, we'll be bringing it out. Okay, the freeze dry has got about 15 minutes, and we'll be getting the squash in, and look at these green beans that he just picked. I've already canned 32 pints. And I'll be canning these tomorrow. So y'all will probably see a video of this canning. I didn't want to just do canning after canning of green beans. But I'll probably show y'all this in another video. Okay, y'all can see the trays. There's one here that you can't see. We've got five trays. And I want to show you what I do to check and make sure that they're dry. Let me get this strap out of the way. You pick it up and watch it. It just snaps like a piece of styrofoam and you know that it's dry or you can just powder it to be sure. So these are plenty good and dry and remember we double stacked them. So we're fixing to put these in, I don't know if you can see them or not. I have some half gallon jars down there and we're going to put them in there with our oxygen absorbers and then we will seal them on our uh, vacuum sealer that's at the end. Okay, I'll just gather it all up. This big old blue funnel sure does have to go down in the jars, right? When I get it, we put it in there and then Troy shakes and shimmies and gets it all down so we can add some more. I like to get as much as I can in each jar. And this is what you do. I could vacuum these in some Mylar bags, but I would rather have them in the jars for whatever the reason. I don't know. But that's just what we do. We put them in the jars. So I'm going to finish getting them off of the trays and into the jars, and then I'll bring you back when we start to seal them on the vacuum. Backmaster. Okay, we got four half gallons and this one has just a little bit less than the others but there there's a lot of uh, a lot of squash there a lot of meals i hope y'all have enjoyed this little instructional video or follow us along or whatever you want to call it it's fun to use the uh, harvest right freeze dryer because it's just unbelievable how you can save space by putting it in, um, deep freeze drying it, and then jarring it and vacuuming it. It'll keep for years like this. Now what I'll do is pop this open and get me a couple of cups out and put it back over there and seal it until I use it all up. So 
if you're on the fence about getting a freeze dryer, maybe this little video would help you to make your mind up. It has its pros and cons. I can freeze dry and store a lot more stuff than Troy and I can eat. I can tell you that. So, but I don't want it to go to waste and I don't have enough room in my deep freeze. And so, I'll just freeze dry it and put it up and it'll keep. And if I'm out of the picture, somebody else can enjoy eating it, huh? Hope y'all will come back for the next video. I'll have some more good stuff coming up in the next few days. I'll probably be canning some green beans. And um, I'll be doing the sweet corn. I mean, the field corn, when it comes in, scraping it off the cob and doing cream style corn. Generally, I just vacuum it and put it in the freezer. But I have found um, in the ball canning book where I can can some in jars. So I'm going to do some in pints just to do it because I've never done it. I'll bring y'all along for that when I do it. The good Lord bless and keep y'all. Come right back here in a day or two and we'll have something else good. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. And hit the little bell where you'll be notified when I upload another video. I appreciate every one of y'all watching and sharing it and subscribing. This is something that I'm just really enjoying doing. And it just tickles me to death when I get on there. And I have a, my subscribers number has gone up. So y'all just keep sharing it, and I'll keep making videos. I'll see y'all in a day or so.